Hi, this is Alan Gleeson for ADSR and this tutorial is part one of a two-part tutorial on what I call Dynamic Everything. So this involves using Dynamics processing but not as we know it in that we're going to use the envelope follower device which is part of the max for live essentials suite we've come across dynamic processors before in terms of things like compressors and gates and expanders they're all dynamics processors and that they respond to the incoming level a lot of devices a lot of synthesizers they don't have dynamic control so what this envelope follower device allows you to do is apply dynamic control to any signal so without any processing, this is what our small arrangement sounds like. So I have a kick drum and hi-hat playing in a drum rack. And I've got a bass line and then I've got a pad that we're going to bring in later. So to start off with, we're going to look at maybe like a typical application of dynamics processing so there are actual devices that do dynamic equalization or dynamic EQ uh, but none of them come with Ableton so we're gonna have a look at that first if you go to our packs and go to yeah where our max for live essentials are stored in the audio effects under control devices we'll see envelope follower so I'm gonna drag that onto our our kick slot so that when I now play this the signal that we're seeing here is the kick drum signal. So I can amplify the signal and I have rise and fall, which is kind of like attack and decay. And I can also delay the signal, either in terms of milliseconds or in terms of musical increments. We've got a scale setting here, so the output can be mapped to control 0 to 100 or yeah, 100 to 0 or any variation there within so to do dynamic EQ we're going to do the actual EQing on the analog synthesizer or the bass a typical situation or sort of problem that you might run into is that you have frequencies in both your kick drum and your bass drum that are clashing with each other so Sometimes you apply side chain compression. Sometimes you just EQ the conflicting signal out of out of one, so there's not uh, a frequency overlap. And we're going to use dynamic processing here. So I'm going to implement this somewhere in the the base frequency range, where exactly depends on where the kick drum is hitting. So if I was to put a spectrum device on to the kick drum here, and I'll just solo the kick drum, sort of hearing it by itself. In our case, the kick drum is quite low. It's somewhere around 43 hertz, so kind of very much in, in the sub frequency range. So on our bass synth track, we will apply EQ in that range. So it's around 43. So that's essentially the range that I want it to be affecting there. But by dynamics processing, it means that this, this process is only going to be carried out when the actual kick drum is hitting. So what I do is I go to my kick drum track and I select map here and assign it to whatever parameter that I want it to affect. So in terms of what we want to do, we want to affect the gain of our EQ. So simple as that. Once we start playing now, we can see that uh, the kick drum is cr controlling the gain dynamically. It's not doing exactly what we want it to do because it's actually turning it up when we want it to actually turn it down. And if we adjusted the scale here, you'll see the issue that we have when we go back and have a look at the, the bass track. Yeah, definitely don't want that. And the way around this is to group the EQ. So if I put it into a group and then assign this control to a macro. So first of all, I need to don't have it affecting the gain, but instead have it affecting the macro here. And I reset that to zero. We're still gonna have the same problem, but 
um, within the audio effect rack, it allows you to scale things. If I map the gain to macro one, I can now affect the scale. So I want it to go from minimum minus 15 to zero. So that's very low in the bass range, so unless you're listening on headphones or you have a, a subwoofer, you're probably not going to hear the direct effect of that. But, you know, that can be applied to any, any kind of frequency range, any kind of frequency conflict that you're having between two instruments that are playing at the same time and you want to resolve that. If you want the range to be slightly more there, on the, I can turn this up here. say we're getting a, a bigger cut there. So the second dynamic control that I want to look at is I want to apply dynamic control to our cutoff frequency on our synth. So at the minute it's just in a static position. I could implement control using something like an LFO or an envelope, but I'm going to use my hi-hat. So I'll unsolo the kick drum. So I'll just solo the hi hat there, so we can see or hear what we're what we're going to work with. So I go back to my Max for Live Essentials again, and I pull in the envelope follower. So we get that the. the uh, so I get the hi-hat registering there, and I'm going to assign this to my cutoff. So immediately you can hear it's much more dynamic. Now it's not doing maybe exactly what we wanted to do straight away. We'll go back to the envelope follower here. Maybe tweak the rise and fall. With our range here, or scale, you can set how much or how little it's actually rising. So that kind of sounds like we're in a good place there. So I'm solo the hi hat again. So the next we're going to look at, we'll try using the snare for something. Now I have um, a pad over here playing using the awesome new synth from Ableton, the Wavetable synthesizer. So we'll just turn that up there and let's hear what this is doing. So I think it's just... So yeah, it's just a sustained chord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have assign dynamic track volume control. So I'm going to have this volume here move uh, in sync with the dynamics of the snare drum. So we go to our snare drum and we'll put the envelope follower on there. So again, we're getting our signal register there and I'll map that and just click on the parameter that I wanted to control. Rise and fall. So that's kind of relatively interesting. Um, what I'm going to do here is you mightn't want you know everything completely synchronized and dynamic with each other. So what we can do here is we can use the delay control here to offset the signal that's been sent to the track and volume control. Let's try it in sync. So if you want a bit more swing in it, maybe you can do and um, just implement it yourself doing milliseconds till you find a spot that
I hope you found that useful. Next week, we'll be looking at further examples of our dynamic everything concept. So see you next time.